You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. It's a tough period and it's a tough time, um, but actually I'm quite optimistic about the longer term here. And I'm very used to this, having been at this since 2008. Uh, gold always does the right thing, as, as Rick Rule says, it just never does it on the time frame you expect. And uh, this is just another case of it's taking a little longer to get going here, but we're going to be fine. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Bill Powers with Mining Stock Education. And joining me today is Larry Lepard of Equity Management Associates. His website is EMA2.com. He's a gold fund manager and Austrian economist. So Larry, thanks for coming back on the show as gold sentiment, at least for us junior gold stock investors is pretty low. I'd like to get your input on how to deal with it. When I'm looking at these juniors that are down, one of them in my account, 75% off of last year's summer high, and there's virtually no bid. How do you deal with this emotionally? <laughs> thanks, Bill, for having me back on the show. I always enjoy being with you. I, when you said that, how do you deal with this? I'm reminded of the scene in Animal House where you know, say, hey, you fucked up, you wrecked your brother's car. You know, my advice to you is to start drinking heavily. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I would never advise that, obviously. In fact, I don't drink myself. I've drank for 30 years. But, um, you know, it, it's a tough it's a tough period. and It's a tough time. Um, but actually, I'm quite optimistic about the longer term here. And I'm very used to this, having been at this since 2008. Uh, gold always does the right thing, as, as Rick Rule says. It just never does it on the time frame you expect. And uh, this is just another case of it's taken a little longer to get going here, but we're going to be fine. Um, you know, in my view, what's going on is the Fed narrative is dominant. And, you know, I saw a poll recently that showed that 60 or 70 percent of investment managers believe the Fed when they say that uh, inflation is transitory. And I don't believe that. I don't think most of our list your listeners believe that. That's why we're invested the way we are. Um, but it's going to take some time until those people realize that they're wrong. And in, in, in light of that, what you know you also see, and I highlighted this on my Twitter feed, which I recommend because I try and put a lot of charts up there when I see things, is in light of this, uh, there's just a lot of money going into the regular stock market. I mean, it's kind of like we're returning to a Goldilocks environment. Um, you know, the um, um, people think that, you know, the growth coming out of COVID, uh, the economy will return to normal. Things will go back to the way they were. We'll have new all-time highs in stocks as we've been having. Um, you know, I talked to an investment manager this morning who said the you know consensus S and P is earnings growth of twelve and a half percent. You know, we might get you know twelve and a half percent growth in the S and P revenues line just because of inflation, but I'm not sure you get earnings growth if you've got you know because they've got inflation and the expenses that they're paying as well. And you know, we're kind of at peak margins in the stock market, and those margins, in my opinion, are going to go down. So if you're applying a multiple to peak margins and you've got an inflationary environment, you know, stocks during the 70s, which is the last inflationary environment we were, they were a terrible investment with the exception of gold stocks and silver stocks, which is, of course, what we're in. So it's been pretty rough. And, you know, my fund is hurt and everybody else's fund is hurt. But, you know, in the last the last two years, we made a ton of money. And, you know, we're kind of in my view, you know, I've got some that are down big, too, but on balance, my stuff's kind of going sideways. And so... I believe that, you know, eventually what will happen is, um, you know, the, what is it? Buffett says it's a it's a voting machine in the short term, but it's a weighing machine in the long term. And, you know, I mean, either Powell's going to be right or he's not right. It's going to be transitory. Inflation is going to go away. We're going to go back to a Goldilocks environment and we're not going to do very well. Uh, you know, I know which side of that bet I want to be on. I'm 100 percent confident in that bet. And as a result of that, and because I have a long time frame, you know, I find what's going on now to be kind of annoying, but not really concerning, you know, because I just, I know what's going to happen, you know, not, I don't know exactly the time frame. that, that part, you know, obviously we'd be wrong. I'm, I'm kind of surprised it's gone on this long, you know, um, but I do think, you know, the March bottom was a bottom. I mean, I think your listeners would do well to go back and listen to your last interview with Michael Oliver, who talks about kind of the swings and, and does a great job of technical analysis. And, you know, he kind of pointed out that he thinks the March bottom is the bottom in the gold price and that, you know, we're now coming up in, in, in Elliott wave terms. You know, we kind of had a five wave up wave one and now we're kind of in a small wave two and wave three is about to start next. And, you know, I, I think as soon as maybe even tomorrow with a hot inflation print, you know, tomorrow being Tuesday, the uh, 13th, you know, we could be back and off to the races because, 
you know, the, the Fed's winning the narrative war right now, but in, in the end, you know, the data is going to determine what people believe. And, you know, if inflation comes in hot and continues to come in hot and hotter, um, they're going to have a problem. Um, and it's going to be a serious problem. And, you know, as, as my letter, which um, is about to be released, it will be out uh, in the next day or two. And you can get it on Twitter. You can also go to my website. It'll be posted there. You can also sign up for a um, email delivery of it. And I won't spam you. All we do is send out the letter every quarter. The letter has a lot of discussion about this whole subject. And uh, because, you know, I'm frustrated too. I mean, you look at, and here we are, we got record monetary growth. You know, the, the money supply is up 40%, 37% or something. More money has been printed in the last year than ever in the history of mankind. And gold should be three or $4,000 an ounce, right? But it's not. And we're all kind of looking at each other like, well, what have we missed here? You know, and I think what we've missed is just that, you know, you've got to remember for 12 years, you know, it's been the correct move to buy the stock market dip. You know, every single dip that got bought has worked. And, and, and it's possible that it will continue to work. And in that case, we're having a crack up boom. Um, but, you know, if we, we can't have a crack up boom without gold participating. Fury Gold Mines is a Canada-focused exploration and development company committed to aggressively growing its scalable high-grade gold assets with major drill campaigns planned across its 3.5 million ounce portfolio. Fury is led by a management team of proven explorers and developers with a track record of success in advancing and financing project development. Fury Gold Mines is well positioned to create value for investors with low risk development growth and the potential for a new major discovery. Fury Gold Mines trades on the TSX and NYSE American under the ticker F-U-R-Y. To learn more, go to furygoldmines.com. That's furygoldmines.com. Larry, you mentioned your fun. Are, you know, one of the feedbacks I've gotten as you've come on the show is people like your candidness, that you share your winners and your losses. Can you talk to us about percentage gains? How'd you perform the last six months? Yeah, so um, we were up about seven or 8% through May and we gave it back. I just got my June numbers and we're up 0.067% year to date. So I'm kind of break even for the year. I think that compares favorably uh, to the GDX chat. I don't have the number. That's right net of fees up. also? Yeah, that's net of fees and carry. Okay. Yeah. I think that compares favorably. I think the GDXJ is down. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe down seven or eight percent for the year. I'm not sure. Um, you know, obviously I'd like to be doing better than that, but um, you know, yeah, we, we just try and pick the best names. I mean, I view my job as doing the analysis, meeting the management teams and trying to find the companies that I think will outperform the indices. I think this whole area is going to do very well. And, you know, if you can't afford the minimum to invest in a fund like mine, buying the GDXJ is a good alternative. Um, you know, there's also a fund called GoAU, G-O-A-U, which I think is well managed and, and picks good names. Um, you know, so I, I think the whole area will do well if the metals do well, and I expect the metals will do well. What were your um, outperformers? Are you able to share some of your yeah, outperformers? Because sure. I mean, some I of can, the juniors are going to be down a lot, just like I mentioned. In yeah, the yeah. Well, well, the first thing is, I mean, I think it's an important point to make here, Bill. We should talk a little bit about silver is better than gold right now. Okay, silver is cheaper than gold on a relative basis. And if you actually look, I found it interesting, and I tweeted this a while back, the, the major silver companies... You know, so we put in a high last August, right, in, in most of these stocks, and, and a lot of them haven't seen that level. There are three big companies that are at or above the August high, and they are First Majestic, AG, um, Coeur d'Alene, it's kind of right at its high, CDE, and Hecla, HL. And so on a relative strength basis, the fact that the three major, three large silver companies that are publicly traded are trading above their August high, that's a lot of relative strength. I mean, it, you know, you've got the GDXJ and and the GDX off significantly from their August high. So I think silver is cheaper and I think silver will lead us out of this hole. And so the silver names are some of my favorite names. I mean, my biggest positions are Guanajuato silver, um, Arcana silver, uh, Avino silver mines. I mean, these are, you know, and there are a number of other silver companies I've involved with drill stories, et cetera. You know, Discovery metals I love. Um, you know, the, 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 the silver names in my opinion are kind of the first place to go looking for beta. You know, now they're also more volatile and, you know, I may not hold them forever. I mean, on a, on a big strong run, I'll probably lighten up on some of them because they, you know, they tend to run hard and then they tend to correct hard. But I think, as you know, you're probably in some good silver names. Um, 
you know, that's, that's kind of where I would start looking. Um, then beyond that, you know, there are a lot of good development names out there that are, you know, that I'm involved with. I'm on the board of Amarillo. I'm on the board of Rice Gold. Um, I obviously believe in those, but I'm very biased. Uh, you know, I think there are even some big company names that just show incredible value. I mean, I think I am gold is just unbelievably undervalued. I mean, to me, like an $800 million my, cash position alone, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just everything about it. I love, um, you know, I was a huge holder of rocks gold. I wasn't a fan of their merger to Fortuna. I thought Fortuna got a steal. Um, I really like Hochschild uh, silver or Hochschild mining, but it's principally silver mining. I think it's deeply, deeply undervalued. Um, been adding to it. Um, you know, there are, there are a number of them. I mean, I'm in Shanta. I'm in, um, I don't know what, uh, and some of these are, are and these are, are like three percent weightings. Is that how you do it? Yeah, I mean, a big weighting for me is four or five percent. Like an IM gold position might be a four percent weighting. I mean, that's a big major, you know. And um, um, you know, a, a heavy weighting is three or four, and and standard weighting for me is kind of one or two percent. So um, most of the names I've mentioned, I'm at least one percent. You know, kind of often approaching two or three, and then of course I sprinkle in lots of other you know companies around the edges that are you know, at various points in time. Um, but, you know, I mean, I like Kinross. I like um, um, Maritime, I think, is a really good development story. Um, and I try not to recommend them when I think they're a little bit extended. I mean, I like some of the drill stories, and they've really come in a lot. When you talk about things that have come down a lot, these drill stories have really backed and filled. I mean, I like BlackRock a lot. Um, I like Lion One. Um, I just added to my position in Blue Lagoon. I've got a big position in Cabral. Uh, Endeavor Mining is a major that's a really well-run major. It's not probably as much upside as some, but, you know, people need to remember that, you know, each of these has a different risk-reward characteristic. I mean, you know, a large producer, you're not going to get a five-bagger, but you're also not going to have a 50% drawdown, you know. Or I mean, 75%, like I mentioned. Or a 75% drawdown, <laughs> right. I mean, some of these little names – you know, when the, when the tide's going the wrong way, you know, it's kind of rough to be there. Um, I own a lot of Gatos. It's run pretty hard. I'm not sure I'd buy it here. Um, you know, I like gold, gold a lot. Um, um, you know, I like gold mining, gold mountain mining a lot. Uh, Do you like the tailings plays, you know, the, the redevelopment tailings plays? Some of them, some of them. I mean, I'm kind of picky on that. Um, I like K92 a lot. I've held it forever. Um, you know, it's big and mature and pretty fully valued, but Kirkland Lake is another big one that's fully valued, but I think it's a really high quality company. It just reported lights out numbers. You know, I, I see people get on. So I love this one company. You know, I'm, I'm all in on this one company. It's a 40% loan. Well, that's nuts. I mean, you've really got to diversify here. You just don't know. They all have risks. They all have challenges. You just don't know which one's going to hit it big, you know? And so, um, but if you get a basket of pretty good ones, um, Manera Alamos is one I've been buying recently. I really like. Uh, montage is another one. I was in Newfound. I've, I've gotten out of Newfound. I just just got too pricey. I had a nine bagger, and I just you know look, you know when you get a nine bagger, you know and maybe in less than a double. year too. Well, yeah, about a year and a half. Year and yeah, a half. okay. You know maybe it's going to double again. I don't know. I mean it's a hell of a deposit. There's no doubt, but it's also a hell of a valuation. You know, um, so well that's where you, you know, got to compare it to an IM Gold and say for the same market cap, what I want right. a producer with. Hundreds yeah, of millions I mean, some of these, the some of these companies. I, last time I did the numbers on IM Gold, it was trading at three times run rate cash flow. You know, so flex the gold price higher. You know, add in these new projects that'll come on over the next few years. I mean, you know, this is a major that could be a three to five bagger. I mean, that's that's pretty good for a major when you don't have a lot of downside risk. Roscan's a pretty good drill story. I like that. Skeen is a great development story. I like that. Got a lot of that. Uh, Shanta is a good story. I like that. Um, Silvercrest is good. It's a little pricey, but I, I like that. Silver Tiger is a great drill story. People have criticized me for not being generous, so I'm trying to be generous. <laughs> well, I haven't criticized you. Step Gold, <laughs> some have. Step Gold is good. Uh, I like that. I think I mentioned that earlier. Uh, Triumph is a little drill story. It's kind of intriguing. Um, I don't know. Those are the ones that, you know, Viscount Mining, Viscount Mining is a silver story that I like. It's a drill story. Still own a lot of West Dome. Um, you know, pricey, but a great company. And what um, cash position are you at? Just to give um, an idea. Right now I'm down to zero. Um, and in fact, when I, my view is we're, we're about to start the next leg up. And when we do, I'll press it. I, 
I never get heavily leveraged, but I do um, add, you know, 10, 20% leverage to my positions when, when I think we're on a run. Um, but I've been kind of, you know, holding back on that just because I'm waiting for this, this uh, downturn to end. I feel like we're very close to ending. I mean, you know, it, it's, um, Jeb Hendwiger was on a, <laughs> Twitter, he said, yeah, I just got, you know, a subscriber who sent me an email message. I can't take it anymore. Cancel my subscription. And my response was great capitulation. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think, I mean, if you're in this space and you don't feel like capitulating right now, you're not human. I mean, I know I feel like capitulating and, you know, I'm the biggest bull in the world on this stuff. So, you know, you, you got to fight your emotions. You really do. You got to, you know, if you're thinking about selling out of this stuff right now, please wait, wait just a month, you know, at least, and just see a few more cards. We're not going back down, you know, to the old highs. I mean, one of the things I want to kind of address, I did in the letter, but I'd like to kind of address it with you, Bill. Yep. Is a lot of people say, well, this is 2008 all over again. And yeah, it's working for a while, but you know, it's gonna, you know, we're topping and, and, and maybe we're back to 2013 and we're gonna get hurt. And so I, I'd like to just kind of address that issue because I've had a few investors ask me about that, right? Yes. The one, I, I don't think it's the, I don't think we're at the same scale, um, you know, in, in terms of it, it's only been about a year, and I don't think bull markets typically end in a year. Um, the second is the speed has been very very quick. Again, you know, it takes longer to do it. Um, to have a bull market top out, um, and you're not seeing any structures being built, as Michael Oliver points out. Um, the, the third thing is we're going direct, which is really, really big. I mean, the 2008 inflation or lack of inflation came because the money went into the banking system to repair the banking system. It didn't go to the people. And as a result, you got an asset bubble in, in, in financial assets, but you didn't get a bubble you know, in, in inflation. And this time, as you know, we're giving out checks to people like crazy, you know, and, and, and so that's a completely different thing. Um, the other thing is, you know, this time, the, I mean, in, in, in 08, the rest of the economy really didn't shut down. I mean, I, you know, obviously the housing bubble, housing shut down, <laughs> they stopped building and everyone in the housing industry was really hurt and bad. But in general, the rest of the economy was kind of ticking along. I mean, there was stock market came off a lot because everyone's house was their biggest asset. But Again, it wasn't a complete shutdown. Here, you have this enormous thing, this, this virus, which basically just shut the entire country down and created an enormous disturbance in the system. And as a result, you know, they, they, you, know, you got all these supply chain issues and other issues that, that started inflation. And the inflation has always kind of been there in the asset growth and the money supply growth. But now you've got it, you really see it. As you and I were talking about before we started here, you know, you got people paying hiring bonuses to work at restaurants. You know, you got, I mean, we've got a sign around here. McDonald's is paying $22 an hour. I mean, the minimum wage here used to be in Massachusetts, used to be like $13.50. So, and I think they were at the minimum. So, I mean, you know, you, you've really got wage inflation. And I, there's a chart in my quarterly report that shows that as well. You've really got wage inflation showing up. And that's, I was a kid in the 70s, but I remember it pretty well. And, and you know, what happens is people, you know, everything's more expensive, right? We all see that. You go buy a hamburger, it costs more than it used to. But, you know, what happens is if, you know, especially when there's help wanted everywhere, you've now got bargaining power if you're an employee. And it's kind of like, well, you know, what do you, how much are my wages going up this year, guys? Because everything I'm buying costs more. And that's how inflation gets going. It's just a cycle, right? So, you know, the worker says, my, everything I buy is more expensive. There are people down the street hiring at higher rates. You need to pay me more. Fine, the business does, but then the business says, well, I can't, I can't survive on that, paying them that. I have to rise my prices. And so it becomes, it becomes an incremental, cyclical, continuing process. And, and of course, it's going to become a problem. And what the Fed has done is they've managed to convince us all they've got these so-called tools. <laughs> and, and, you know, I just have to laugh. I mean, what tools have they got? I mean, yeah, they can job on it. But they really, the only tools they have are withdrawing the stimulus, you know, um, or, or increasing the, the interest rate. And, you know, in, in the extended levered economy that we have right now, you know, both of those, in my mind, they're, they're not really tools. I mean, they're tools they could use, but if they did, we'd fall into a deflationary hole. And we know it, and they know it. And the net result of that is that they, they won't be able to go there. So, I think they're going to have an enormous inflation problem, Bill. And I think when they, when they do and it becomes obvious, this stuff is going to take off like a scalded dog. 
I mean, we're going to go through 1950, then we're going to go through the last summer's high, you know, 2070 or 2080, depending on closing or inner day. And, and people are going to go, oh, my God. We got a real we got a real inflation problem here. And then the gold. Larry, I agree with that macro analysis. But as gold stock investors, do you ever ask yourself, like, how early is too early to where you're actually wrong? You know, do you ever ask yourself that? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I've been wrong. I mean, I was I was pounding the table to new investors in August of last year. You got to get in before this thing runs away. And some of them did. And now they're calling me and saying, hey, dude. You know, you were pounding the table. What the hell's going on? I'm not making any money. <laughs> and I'm saying, yeah, you're right. I was wrong and I'm sorry. But, you know, I mean, we're, look, we're talking about something that's pretty big here, right? I mean, we're talking about the collapsing of a sovereign debt bubble, which, you know, hasn't happened in 100 years. And we're talking about a change from a 40-year trend of deflation into what I believe is going to be a longer trend of inflation. And, you know, so this is a kind of a battleship or, a, you know, a big ship and you're trying to super tanker and you're trying to turn it. And, you know, there are going to be waves. It's going to be bumpy. And, you know, we're now in one of the waves that's kind of going against us. And, you know, but but let's not remember. I mean, if you were in this category, in fact, I did the somebody on Twitter the other day said to me, hey, this GDXJ really sucks. You know, I, I you know, I'm not making any money here. I said, when did you buy? And he said, well, last August. I said, well, yeah, no, you're right. You're not. But go back to the beginning of 19. You know, from 19 to, to today, the GDXJ is up 45%. It's two and a half years, okay? So beginning of January, 19, you know, January of 19. Um, and I, you know, compounded that 17%. Hey, 17% a year, that's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. I mean, and, and here we are, you know, on a drawdown. I mean, you were up more than that last August, obviously. Um, and it's just, you know, it's waves on a beach, right? So, so we, you know, we, we've endured a bad wave here. And, you know, it's no fun, but, you know, I don't know. I, I can just say, you know, being as, you know, being the age I'm at, I'm 64 and having done this for since 08, I'm kind of like, oh, God, here we go again. Yawn, you know, another pullback. Everyone's going to get freaked out. Yeah, I, you know, been there, done that. But, you know, just, I mean, I, and my, even my wife gets nervous about, it. are we okay? Are we okay? And I'm like, relax, you know. Relax. We're on the right side here. This is a bull market. You know, I mean, it's, uh, re, you know, read the Jesse Livermore book. I mean, get right, sit tight and just relax. You know, it's, it's all, it's all going to be okay. It, it really is. Now, is it going to be okay tomorrow? I don't know. But, you know, if at the end of this year, we're not at much higher prices, well, then, you know, send me an email and tell me I'm an idiot. And, and, you know, I'll confess, maybe I am an idiot. Maybe I missed something, but I mean, look, I've, I've done it before. I mean, in 2008, I thought it was going to go. In 2011, I was incredibly bullish. I was dead ass wrong. I didn't see what they could do. And there were a lot of things they did to help themselves out, by the way. Inflation was breaking out in 2011. They did Operation Twist. They attacked the gold price with paper gold. You know, they, they basically relit another sovereign debt, another debt bubble. You know, so they did one in dot coms. They did one in housing. This is at the sovereign level. What are we going to go to? The interplanetary level? There is no higher level. I mean, this bubble is a bubble in the money. Now, and you made a lot of money on the tech boom, right? On that yeah, <laughs> I, I, I done well on the tech boom. I mean, that's, you know, I, I mean, the reason, the reason I got into this whole trade was I was in 2008, or I, yeah, I mean, I, I retired kind of in 2003 or four, having been an internet and tech investor for 20 some odd years. I was coaching my kids' little league teams and having fun kind of managing my own money. 2008 happened. I said, holy shit, I can't really retire because I don't know what this money is going to be worth in 20 years, you know, because they're printing so much of it. I've got to figure out a way to protect myself from monetary debasement. So I pivoted and got into gold and silver, you know, learned this business. And I've been picking these names since 08. And, you know, it, it's uh, it's obviously been a tough ride. I mean, you know, I, I looked very smart for about three years. And I look like a complete moron from, you know, 2012 to 2015. I mean, I got my ass handed to me, but, you know, being an Austrian economist and understanding the cyclicality of this thing, you know, the, the system is fundamentally broken. I mean, the notion that you can continually increase debt and print money in, in so doing and not have it ultimately go exponential, it just doesn't work mathematically. I mean, this is the top of my Twitter feed. If you grow the debt level faster than you grow the GDP level, eventually, you, you know, you blow up. You, you, you either, you know, you cannot service the debt. The debt becomes worthless. You have to reset. And this is, you know, these are credit cycles. And, 
you know, my friend Dan Oliver does a great job of outlining these and talking about these in his letters. I mean, this has been happening for millennia. And, you know, we're at the top of another credit cycle and it's bursting. And so, you know, when that happens, this is, the, we're in the right place. We're absolutely in the right place. So what I would say to people in this area is just, you know, just relax. It's all going to be fine. <laughs> you know, um, not sure exactly the time frame. Uh, don't use leverage. I mean, uh, leverage is dangerous. You know, I mean, uh, there's always the possibility of another March 2020. I mean, if we get a huge deflationary impulse, I mean, I'm prepared to have all these things go down substantially. And I'm not, and I won't, and I won't sell, you know, because I, I know, I know that longer term, man-made money is doomed. It's just absolutely doomed. We're going to go back to money that's either driven by, you know, a fundamental commodity that can't be printed or a mathematical equation that can't be hacked. It's going to be one of the two or both. And, you know, I think it's going to be both. Obviously, that's not what we're talking about here. As you know, I, I do support Bitcoin and I have a small allocation to it in my fund. So. But, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm 90 percent. I mean, I'm a gold guy through and through. And, you know, gold, gold will take you where you want to be. Excellent. Gold will definitely take you where you want to be. We'll leave it like that. And we'll call this talk seasoned advice from a seasoned gold <laughs> investor, because oh, the, the you, emotional hopefully. cycles, you have to learn how to deal with them. And I think you've yeah. given some key advice. Yeah, it's tough. But hang in there. We're going to be fine. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Larry's website is EMA, the number two dot com. You can sign up for Larry's letter there. That's the easiest way, right, Larry? Yeah, it is. You can sign up for the letter there. You can get my past quarterlies there. There's a lot of there's a lot of data and a lot of charts. I'm also on Twitter and I try to, you know, post charts as I see them that I think are relevant. Um, just kind of supporting our thesis. And it's just my name at Lawrence Lepard. Uh, just one word and you'll you'll see it. So Excellent. Um, you know, good luck to all gold investors. We're going to be fine, folks. Uh, in fact, we're going to win and we're going to have all the marbles and then we're going to fix the system, which is really what needs to happen. So <laughs> uh, we'll leave it at that. And Larry, thanks okay. for contributing to my show today. Thank you, Bill. Enjoyed it. 